Hello everybody, Dave Neal here, continuing coverage of the breakup heard round the world or parts of the United States. The Greg Grippo exiting after the hometown's date with Katie Thurston. Her finale is this Monday where she said, where he says, I emptied my heart to you. And she says, I don't think you know what love is. Kiss. And then they peace. So we'll have to see how that conversation goes. Um, I, I, for one, believe it'll be highly dramatic. Nick Vial will have Greg Grippo on his podcast right afterwards. So we're going to be deep diving into the he said, she said. We all saw it on camera, but it was edited. All right. It's not a magic trick where you get to watch it all right up close. You know what I mean? What's going on in my hands? Get some dirt on me. Anyway, so I wasn't even going to make this video because, I mean, look, I mean, how much can we talk about it? Apparently a lot, but I'm going to Italian dinner tonight and I want to order a couple extra appetizers. So here we are. Now, the conversation just continues. I'm going to play you a quick uh, clip from uh, Caitlin Bristow talking on the Clickbait podcast about what it's like to have contestants self-eliminate on your season. So what she went through and Tasha had the same thing. And then after that, I'll, I'll give you a quick, quick teaser here. We're going to discuss what um, Demi Burnett said. I'll just, I'll, I'll show you what she said and we'll discuss the fallout from this. She goes, I like Greg and I'm not sorry about it. I've met him and he's a really nice person and a good friend. We all make mistakes dating and that's how we learn. He does not deserve all the hatred. I will die on this hill. Hashtag the bachelorette. We'll discuss that. We'll get right into it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not ready for that. Hold on a second. So do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, now you can talk. Hold on. Hold on a second. Again, a little feisty here on Instagram. And at the end of this video, I'm going to play for you a voicemail I received from the one, the only, Karen in Huntsville. So I'll play that at the end. In the meantime, here we go. Let's listen to this clip. As Bachelorettes, ha- Caitlin, did you have people self-eliminate on your season? I wanted to leave this. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, hell no. <laughs> I don't think anybody. Oh, yeah, I did have one guy. But again, no, two guys. Okay, I did have two guys. Wait, they, it was the same thing. They both were like madly in love. And then because I wasn't showing it back, they were like, I'm out of here. Okay. Really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, my God. I'm really happy that you just said that because I was like, oh, my God. Someone did that to me on mine. I'm like, oh, my God. I actually forgot because. Could you guys let me know who did this on Tasha's season and who did this on Caitlyn's season? Tasha's season. Can we remember who it was? It wasn't Ben. Who who was the guy that left Tasha? It was, well, it was that, kind of early. So that's what I want to know. Like, as the Bachelorette, when you get so far, mm-hmm. it's like, I'm sure you're like, I'm picking my husband. That's the whole reason why we're here, right? These men are for me. And like, I'm picking my husband. So with her having Michael A leave and then Greg leave, do you think like from think you know putting on your bachelorette head, does it just like does it just hit the ego so hard that like you you feel a certain type of way? Because I was trying to figure out how she really felt in that moment. Like how did you guys mm. feel when those things happen? Like does it just hit that hard? Good question. It, it does hurt the ego quite a bit. It does. <laughs> um and I think Katie well, I think bachelorettes do a really good job at compartmentalizing their... Real quick, is Grocery Store Joe there, or is he just playing a loop of himself over and over? I mean, this is... What a great job. Relationships where they're really in the moment with their their people. Maybe bachelors do it too, but I just know that, like, for me, I really, like, exhausted the relationships until the end, and it felt like... You're just so emotionally drained by the end of it. And if somebody isn't like, like we all said, Katie isn't returning the emotion that Greg was, but Greg also wasn't returning the emotion because he just left. Right. And so I think she was like, wow, uh, that could have been my person. And like, he really showed me that he could not hang if things got hard. And so I think she could have been like fully still invested in in Justin and Blake. But in that moment, she was rock bottom from Greg couldn't hang if things got hard good didn't even get to the fantasy suite to see how hard things could get all right folks and look i'm 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 messing with grocery store joe i mean you know this is obviously like uh, natasha asked a very uh a very good question to caitlin and tasha so uh clearly he's uh doing his best to just uh let the ladies talk if he talks too much he's mansplaining if he doesn't talk enough i'm making fun of him in the meantime i mean he's got a good cushy job and then natasha there looks like she's uh being uh you know possessed but uh, she's beautiful 
Is Natasha great? Why why is Natasha not in the running for Bachelorette? Is it is she with somebody? I mean, she would be a great Bachelorette. She's she's so um I don't know, I think she's so relatable. I really like Natasha. Uh let me know what you guys think. Uh but in the yeah, it's Tasha, Natasha. I've got a Tasha. So I'm mixing everyone's names up. I'm going out to Italian tonight trying to not uh, mistake my fiance's name. Is it Tasha, Natasha? Oh, uh, not Natasha, we have Natasha, Tasha, and my Tasha. Those are the three. Okay, we're good. So anyway, let me know who you think these uh, the, the, these men might have been that self eliminated. But um, yeah, I think I think it's actually a smart idea. I know Kitty didn't do this on purpose, but it's almost a smart idea to throw to throw something at the guys, you know, to see if they're willing to fight for you. You know what I mean? I've always thought it'd be fun to have like another sinister thing where maybe there's like a hidden camera and they'll have like some some like random girl. Like imagine if some lady came in as like a masseuse and she hit on Greg and they thought they were off camera and she gave him her, her number. You know, something like that. I know, I know. So they don't like to do that because I think you get to see how, how, how much of a dog some of these guys are. But uh, that would be interesting. So anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, who knows? Katie's going through a lot. She's going through breakups and hometowns. She's talking to parents. And then Greg's like, I just need you to pay attention to me. She's like, I'm trying to. I'm just trying to remember your dad, all these dads' names or whatever. All right, so uh, BachelorNation.Scoop doing the Lord's work. I said this earlier. I said she's. Do, uh, I said BachelorNation.Scoop is doing the Lord's work. And someone goes, what do you mean doing the Lord's work? And it's like, I'm not trying to have a f- an evangelical fight. Doing the Lord's work is just a saying when someone's putting a lot of effort in okay they're doing the lord's work it'd be like if i uh you know brought all mu- a bunch of muffins you know to uh, to the office oh there's dave doing the lord's work you know what i mean i don't know all right so anyway uh bachelor nation that scoop said this is why many abuse victims don't come forward friends say they're so nice it can't be okay this is in reference to demi saying i like greg and i'm not a and i'm not sorry about it I've met him and he's a really nice person and a good friend. We all make mistakes dating. That's how we learn. He does not deserve all the hatred. I will die on the sill. And of course, Dr. Diane Strakowski, who was on my channel yesterday, which by the way, if you haven't watched it, is getting amazing reviews. She has so much good stuff to say. Dr. Diane Strakowski said, you know, we're all like tea. We don't know uh, our flavor until we put ourselves in hot water. And, um, you know, Greg might have been a, he might be a great friend. I, I know plenty of people that are great friends, but when they push themselves to that point where they're being exposed and their personal sort of like their heart is being sort of like unguarded, it's like, you know, he's like, I, my dog loves me, but if I back him into a corner and there's a stake between me and him, he's going to try to get that stake. You know what I mean? So, uh, uh, Greg's reptilian responses in, in his sort of like flaring of his limbic system, uh, doesn't mean, He's not a nice person. It doesn't mean he's not a good guy. It means he didn't respond well to this situation. And people say, oh, Dave, we get it. I'm reading, I read your comments. They go, Dave, we get it. You love Katie, you hate Greg. Where did I say I hated Greg? I said I saw, I could, I could see myself as a Greg. I could see myself on a bad day, you know, maybe a few years ago. I feel like I've learned a lot in my relationship because my fiance does a good job of, of setting boundaries because she's been in her own bad relationships where like, you know, she's where the guys have kind of like crossed the line with, you know, we talk about on our podcast, but the guys will cross the line with sort of like the, the emotional manipulation and all that. So I've had to learn, I've learned in the past toxic survival tactics for like getting attention, which I think we all do. We all learn bad behavior and then we have to unlearn it. Now we learn that bad behavior through parents that either don't pay attention. You know, they always say it's like either your dad doesn't hug you or your mom hugs you too much. Whatever your issues are, we all got them. Let's just get over them. All right. Let's get over them. Not by burying them down with our, you know, sugar addiction or whatever the case may be. But I do, I do want a cookie. But by, you know, by, uh, by actually exposing what they are, letting them dissipate and, uh, and getting back to that pure state where we don't, we don't have bundles of hatred balled up inside of us, preventing our chi from flowing effortlessly through our bodies. So Demi, I mean, I like Demi. I do. I like Demi. I like her points of view. I like, I like her honesty. Uh, with that said, I don't know. I don't know if Greg needs people to stick up for him. You know, I don't know. Does he need, does he need people to stick up for him? I mean, he's going to have his podcast on, he's going to be on Nick Vile's podcast. He's going to be, he's going to be on after the final rose, you know, days, days away from now, we're going to hear from him. I don't think he's asking for people to stick up for him, but, but Demi does. And then someone agreed while his reaction may have been a lot. He was more than justified to be upset. Um, 
She had no problem having an issue with Luke P, though, speaking of Demi. So, like, let's just go down the list here. I mean, and then all these comments. Dude, WTF, this is so dangerous of her to say. You can be nice to someone in a huge POS, dick to another. What's her point? It's still not right. I will die on that hill. I will die on, what hill will I die on? I will, I'd like to die on a hill that has good medical uh, care. I'd like to die in the comfort of a nice hospital or, you know, at least, um, you know, being with my family and loved ones. Uh, what hill is that? Um, you can be an awesome friend, but also be a snotty boyfriend. WTF is wrong with people coming up with excuses for others. 100% with the bottoms comment about her not having an issue with having a problem with Luke P. There's no difference here besides the fact that she's friends with Greg. You know we're getting into the thick of things and we start bringing up Luke P. I mean, how far back do we want to go? You know what I mean? Um, so anyway, uh, uh, oh, so here, well, ladies and gentlemen, we have some breaking news we need to get into. This is a big deal. Oh, my gosh. Ladies and gentlemen... Breaking news in Bachelor Nation. As it turns out, Demi Burnett's tweet was liked by Connor Brennan. Can you believe this? This has been breaking news. I mean, what are we doing, folks? What are we doing? I'll, you know what? I'll post on my Instagram tonight all the extra appetizers I order. So if you want to go see what I order, I'm going to this Italian place. I'll tell you afterwards because I don't want any weirdos to come find me. But um, I'm going to this Italian place in Los Angeles in Silver Lake. And the food's actually reasonably priced. And it's such a good Italian place. Tasha and I went back like three weeks in a row because there was so much. You ever see the menu and there's so many things you want to try, but you're like... I know my stomach can eat a lot, but not that much. And so we're in that point of our relationship. We call it dink, dual income, no kids, where we I talk to my sister who's got four kids and I go, hey, Chase, you know, like, I don't I'm dink. I'm dual income, no kids. We get to go out. We don't have T-balls to buy in practices and ballerina outfits and all that. We just got to, don't, I said we just have a dog, but that, you know, we just had to spend $9,000 getting his uh, stomach flipped over, but he survived and he's happy and we would gladly do that. And I know someone's going to be commenting, why would you do that? Because we have a soul and that dog Dog's all we have, and we love him. Hashtag Boone the Bassett. Uh, so anyway, uh, Connor Connor's a good guy. He's a good guy. He seems to mean well. Um, it's just it's just wild that that becomes news too. We like Connor, right? Connor's done nothing problematic. Connor's friends with Greg. So we we like how far down the list can you go? Now imagine if I liked Connor liking Demi liking Greg. Like what are we gonna do? What are we doing, folks? What are we doing? How far do we co-sign this thing? Um, someone said, OMG, of course it would be a nice guy to a friend. People are way different when they're in a relationship. Serial killers were always nice to their friends or coworkers. I hope people schooled Demi. All right, so now we've compared Greg to a serial killer. Although I do, I do, I do uh, appreciate the logic there that, yeah, plenty of serial killers are, were very charming people. I mean, I, they convinced you to go into the woods to their cabin. They're very charming people. You know what I mean? Uh, usually they're psychopaths. She didn't respond perfectly when he said, I love you, but follow. Okay. All right. So here we go. Let's just end with this. Let's see. Let's have a listen to, this is what Caitlin said. I think she said enough. I think we've heard it all, but let's see if she gives us anything new. Before I watched, I was team neutral. Um, I was like, you know, Katie could have responded better. And Greg's probably hurt. And then I watched it back and I was like, Oh, all right. So, I guess that's it. That's it for that. All right, let's go to this voicemail. I'll play you guys this voicemail. A classic voicemail from Karen in Huntsville. We love Karen. Let's end it with you. Yeah, hi, Dave. It's been a long time. This is Karen from Huntsville, only it's hers now. And, uh, you know, I watched the Katie uh, Greg thing, and I am so, you know, I was just so disappointed. And Katie could have been a little more um, loving towards them and, Whatever, but um, it, it's a shame what happened. But anyway, it was good, you know, to talk to you again. Um, you know, I've been out of commission here for a little bit. So uh, have a good one, and I hope um, your day is fine. Thanks. Bye-bye. You know, Karen in Huntsville called in with some, you know, Huntsville, Texas, right? She called in a few months ago during the Rachel Kirk Connell thing, sort of defending her views on Rachel Kirk Connell. And uh, she got a lot of hate. You know, she's a random caller. Seems like a nice lady. She got a lot of hate. Um, and, you know, maybe some of it was like just fair criticism. But, it, you know, as, as people that like uh, randomly comment or, you know, or aren't, you know, don't grow up with social media, it's kind of hard to just get random hate from people. It doesn't feel good. It's not a good feeling. We gave Karen some compassion. 
We said, I don't care. I want to hear your opinion. I want to hear the opinions of other people that I either disagree with or that sound differently than I do, whether it be a Southern accent or whatever the case may be. I want to hear your opinion. Karen, I'm so glad she called. I, I've been People have been asking about Karen. Where's Karen from Huntsville? We haven't heard from her in a while. You cut the crap. She, that's her favorite tagline. You cut the crap. And we're happy to hear from you, Karen. I hope things are well. Let me know. Give me an update. Call back, and uh, we'll uh, we'll keep talking. All right, folks. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, tell me tell me who this was with Keelan Bristow season who eliminated and teaches as well. I'd love to know. And uh, and also let's just uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We'll get ready for uh, this finale. We've got a lot to talk about. We'll have live streams Monday. Uh, my Patreon live stream is Saturday morning tomorrow, eight thirty a.m. Pacific time. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to switch it up different times. Uh, you can listen to that afterwards on the replay or whatever. That'll just be a, a more personal conversation with me and dozens of you guys. Uh, so thank you to all the Patreon members. We'll talk to you later. I'm off to Italian food. going to go eat that bruschetta, 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 whatever, however you pronounce it. It's going to be good. Bye guys. <laughs>